Hi guys, welcome to the Block Spotlight and today we're going to look at some of the newest additions to Thermal Expansion and Thermal Expansion has decided to add its own engines um, so what we have here on the left hand side we have a steam engine yet yeah, another steam engine uh, I think so many mods have added steam engines these days it's going to be difficult to keep track of of exactly which steam engine people are talking about when they say steam engine. Uh, we also have magmatic engine as well. So um, this one as you can see we have a, a water tank on the right hand side here and a place there for fuel. Now we've also got the usual tabs that you'll be used to with thermal expansion and to some extent forestry. Um, I think they're starting to add these to the build craft things as well. And of course the all important redstone control one. This is where we can basically decide. Well, you can essentially turn this on and off. You can disable redstone control or turn it on and off there. So very, very useful. And this steam engine will output uh, the same, same output as the hobbyist steam engine from Railcraft which is uh, two Minecraft jewels a tick um, and, and a maximum the the sterling engine from Billcraft will only do one but these uh, these combi engines that take their own water supply um, they'll put out two now the magma engine this actually has a lava tank so you would fill that up with lava and that's basically what's going to power it, this will put out four Minecraft jewels a tick. Uh, so double the output of the steam engine. Now how you make these uh, is a little bit of a similar recipe to what you'd be used to for a lot of the engines. Uh, differences are, well, this is the steam engine so we've got copper along the top, um, a redstone transmission coil which is a piece of silver with uh, redstone in the top and bottom corners like so. Uh, then we have copper gears and these aren't your regular Billcraft copper gears uh, which is important to note. Uh, these are special thermal expansion gears which is an iron ingot with copper ingots around it in a cross shape like so. Um, the, the copper gears that you're used to uh, which are from Billcraft, these ones here, or from Forestry, I think these particular ones. Um, these ones I'm pretty sure will not work. No, they won't work. So you need to make sure that you're using the right gears. And the same goes with this one here. This is the same kind of thing except with tin. Got a redstone transmission coil as well. This gives you the magmatic engine. And these tin gears are tin around an iron ingot. And again, the tin gears will not work. The the regular Billcraft tin gears will not work there. So that's that's important to know if you're going to be building these for the first time, uh, which you may well be doing. You might be used to uh, the Billcraft gear recipe, but that recipe is not going to work for these, I'm afraid. Okay, now um, as for the actual operation, let's see. Let's get ourselves some water. Let's go in there. Now we should just be able to put some water cans straight in there, like so, which won't work at all. I'm guessing then we need a bucket. So it's not going to take cans, it will take buckets. Um, what else would it take? Will it take water cells? This is where we find out exactly. Uh, no, it's not going to take water cells, so it will only take buckets. Uh, how about a water bottle? It should take a water bottle. No. So it will only take buckets into there. And then fuel-wise, let's see what kind of fuels it will take. It will take cold coke. It will take cold coke. And if we then turn it on... See, the heat is gone already. Well... Wow. Let's uh, get a stack of cold coke. That seems to have. I 
I would assume that the best way to do this would be to um, to pump it in. So by default, this, this appears to be on, um, and there uh, it's the power output will slowly ramp up to the two uh, Minecraft jewels a tick. There we go. And we'll we'll let that build up some heat, see if we can get it to explode. Because we all like explosions. Right now the magmatic engine, this is gonna require lava. And what's the bet in that we can't use lava cells, capsules, cans, it's gotta be buckets. Let's let's try. So we can't put a lava cell in, we can't put a lava can in, we can however put a bucket in. And that's gonna uh Churn away as well. Now I've got no idea what kind of heat these things can get to. In fact, I'd, I've got a feeling that these guys won't actually explode, but what they will do is just shut down um, and then they'll require reactivating with a wrench. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's going to happen. Probably when that gets to a thousand. So, uh, I will come back when uh, these guys have got up to temperature. Okay, we are back, and this one here on the left hand side is holding steady at 600 degrees C, but the energy store is, is going up, and I'm expecting it to um, reach its maximum energy stored some point fairly soon, and when that happens, it will probably go into shutdown. A forced shutdown, as you can see, it's um, it's going quite fast now. I expect when that gets to 5,000, that's going to uh, shut down. This one here, it's, the heat is still going up, and the energy is, is still going up as well. This is uh, almost a maximum power, and I think the reason they're they're not at full power is because their energy stored is quite high. This is maxing out at 1100 and f 4 output and as this one is getting really full it's just slowing down so it seems to be quite intelligent about how much power it's actually putting out so when it gets close to its maximum it's going to um, start slowing down the output which is really cool. It should mean that you can use it in those situations where uh, you need infrequent power, like um, like the forestry farms. So here we are, close to 5,000. Is this going to go into a shutdown? Yep. So 5,000, that goes into shutdown. And I think to reactivate it, you need a build craft wrench. And you just right-click it. And away it goes again. This one, maybe this is going to stop at 10. 10,000. It should make sense. Double the output of that one. And again, the power output is beginning to drop. Let's see if we can get some more lava in there, shall we? It is a bit unusual that these won't take any of the other containers. You would expect them to uh, to have knowledge of cans and capsules and things like that. Um, there we go. This is getting really, really close now. So this should hopefully shut down at 10,000. And it has done. So again, just right-click to get that going again. And we've lost a bunch of power while that was off. So there you go, guys. That's the two engines that thermal expansion adds. Uh, ex extremely useful especially this one here the magma magmatic engine running off lava there isn't another engine I think that runs off lava this is kind of duplicating existing engines that are already out there except it does seem to be a little bit more intelligent about uh, how it shuts down how it generates its power and things like that so well worth using probably in place of the the railcraft engine I would say I'll probably use this um, 
instead of the hobbyist engine whether I would use it in place of the uh, the Sterling engine I'm not too sure uh, it has got double the output but the Sterling engine doesn't require water and this obviously will only take buckets or you would have to pipe the water in or put it in I guess with an aqueous accumulator which is from the same mod so that should work as well so there we go guys two new engines hope you've enjoyed it please uh, hit the subscribe button uh, if you've enjoyed this, this little video uh, follow me over on Twitter as well and you'll find out when I'm releasing new videos which tends to be every day um, other than that I will see you next time goodbye